Folks at home, welcome back to the Backyard Bass Pond. We got a lot going on in today's video. First up, we're gonna be building an inverted aquarium. I mean, basically, that's just taking an aquarium, flipping it upside down, and putting it over a body of water like this pond, vacuuming all the air out of it, and it allows the fish to swim up over the ground level. Pretty cool idea. Also, if you missed our last video, our pet bluegill spawned. We have baby bluegills in the pond, and we also have two other bluegills spawning at this exact moment. So, lots of baby bluegills in the future. More coming up on that later, and we're we're also going to be taking a trip out to the farm. If you missed it, we bought an 80 acre farm and we're going to be building a big bass lake on it. We'll be going out there later. But first, let's get started with this inverted aquarium. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is go swimming with the fish. I need to get down there in the pond and kind of measure the height right there because we're thinking about putting the aquarium long ways right here where you can see the waterfall in the background. Hey, look who's up there behind the waterfall. We got Clyde up there. All right, time to go for a swim. Here it is, folks. This is what it's like to be standing in the middle of your backyard pond. Feels pretty cool, even though it's August. Let's go under the limit. All right, so it just so happens that three stacked cinder blocks is pretty close to the height I need. So we're gonna stack them like that in the pond, put the aquarium upside down over the top of it. But first, I'm gonna give these guys a good wash and the last thing I wanna do is have a bunch of concrete dust in the pond. So now we're gonna make use out of the old Ninja Turtle tank. Nothing in there at the moment. So we're gonna flip it upside down, put it in the pond. All right, folks, got everything set up. We got the cinder blocks out there. This is the size of the aquarium we're gonna be using. And then we're going to use this to suction the air out of it once we flip it upside down. I'm trying to get started a little bit early this morning so we'll have plenty of daylight to complete this project. And also really good lighting over here at the pond. You can see the fish a lot better this time of day. So close. So this is my three block stack. It's just above the water right here. So I'm gonna have to remove a couple rocks out from below it. We need the top surface to be right at the level of the water. All right, I think that is perfect. We got just a little bit of a layer of water right over the surface of it. Everything's level right there. Now we're gonna go about on here. All right, this is the first attempt. Probably not gonna work. May have to make some adjustments, but here we go. Let's give it a shot. All right, so we were really close. We got the water just above the edge all the way around, except for on the back side. I don't know, we may give it a shot. It's gonna be really close right there, but it's pretty level. You can see the water level is pretty consistent. So we may have an issue with the water coming back out right there, but I think we can give it a shot. All right, here we go. Let's give it a shot. We're just trying to get all the air out of there. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> 
That is crazy. These fish took the first opportunity they could to get up above pond level, and now they can see out here into the yard and everything else. It's gonna be crazy if one of the bass or turtles gets in there. Might end up putting some fish food in right here. So I think right now I'm just gonna let it settle down, hop out of the pond, let all that dirt settle, and just see what happens. We still got a little bit of air up here in the top. I noticed just a second ago I made a wave and it kind of let some more air in there, so pretty cool little thing to play around with. Mosquito fish definitely love it. That's too cool, guys. So this is a pretty cool experiment. The mosquito fish definitely like it the most. There's probably been a hundred of them or so that have come in and out of it. The turtle tried to get in it, but he couldn't figure out how to get in it. This obviously did not affect the bluegills at all. You can see one of them still trying to spawn his nest right below the aquarium. And check this out. A group of golden shiners are starting to come into the aquarium and they're getting a little bit comfortable with it. And about that time, a bass comes up underneath them and it spooks them and they start going crazy and can't figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> That is what you call a shad buffet. So take a look at those bricks holding up the right side of the aquarium. Over the course of the day, you can see the water level has dropped a little bit and watch what happens when it gets just a little bit below that brick level. All right, so I'm going to add some water back to the pond, vacuum it out again, and see if we can get one of the bass or bluegills in there. So in our last video, two of our bluegills spawned, and we got a lot of baby bluegills in the pond now. But as you fishermen know, bluegills spawn multiple times a year, and two of the bluegills are building nests right across from each other. Let's go ahead and roll the highlight clip. So those are both male bluegills and their goal is to get this big female bluegill to come by and lay her eggs in their nest. I'll keep you guys posted on which one she chooses. Alright folks, back out here at the farm and a quick pond update. We are working with an engineer to do some watershed studies to figure out the best location for the dam. I'll be giving you all those details in an upcoming video, but today we're going to be out here checking a crawfish trap that Liz and I set last week. We use four different types of bait. We use bread, bacon, turkey, and dog food. Let's go see if we got any crawfish. All right, folks, made it back to the creek here. The water level has definitely dropped. We're about to check our trap that Liz and I set out the last time. Not seeing a whole lot in it. A lot of these are just gonna be our little bait balls. Oh, there's a couple of tiny crawfish. Check that out. We got three, we got three little baby crawfish. Probably gonna keep those little guys, put them in the turtle pond. I'll get them up here and get them out of the trap so you can see them a little better. All right, now I got the basket open. We can actually see them. Four little baby crawfish. One, two, 
three, four. That's perfect. Four turtles, four crawfish. We're gonna put these guys in the turtle pond. Not very big at all, but they're scrappy. So leave us a name for four new pet crawfish. I'm gonna take them and put them in the turtle pond now. All right, you can see all the deer sign here, so it's time to take a look at some of these game cams and see what's eating all the peanuts. <laughs> That's gotta be the biggest armadillo I've ever seen. He found a gold mine when he found this peanut farm. Next up, we got our fox squirrel that we call Foxy, and there's a lot going on in this photo. First off, he's bowed up at all the crows around there that are trying to take his peanuts. And second, look at all the doves lined up there on that power line. Lots of doves flying in, getting ready for the peanut harvest. Foxy out there early in the morning when the doves are flying in. Oh, this is not something that you want to see. I'm pretty sure that's two coyotes. And I can definitely understand why they're out here because there's a lot of different game animals around, including Mr. Rabbit. You can tell he's been eating pretty good himself. So this is a pretty interesting photo. We can't tell if this is just a neighborhood cat or a small bobcat. Here's two different shots of them. Take a look and leave a comment down below if you know if this is a bobcat or just a house cat. And this is a really big doe that always hangs out on the property. We think that she's probably pregnant and not just full of peanuts. We'll find out here in the next month. <laughs> Check out the raccoon grabbing fistfuls of the peanuts. And a little young buck coming out first thing in the morning. And more doves. You can definitely tell that the place is loaded with doves. You can see them flying here every time you come out. It's going to be a fun dove hunting season. So the next time I do this, I'm definitely going to get an aquarium that doesn't have that trim and border around the outside. If it was all clear, that would give it that really natural look and that would go in perfect. Also, those bricks kind of stand out. Definitely think it's worth building a custom stand that doesn't take up that much water space. And what do we got going on here? It looks like we got a cricket dancing side to side on the side of the aquarium. <laughs> That's crazy. Here's a good look at the waterfall. We're actually getting Aquascape to come in and build a waterfall similar to this, but probably bigger leading into our new lake. More details on that to come. Milo hanging with me out here at the pond today. Loves drinking the fresh water. I keep waiting on the day for him to fall in. <laughs> this is starting to be Milo's favorite thing to do. Come stand on the rock and just look into the pond. He says it's so peaceful and relaxing. <laughs> All right, folks, unfortunately, we're a little bit limited on time for this experiment because we have not only one, but two tropical storms coming into the Gulf. And we're right down here on the southern tip of Alabama. So I definitely can't leave this aquarium set up in the pond. So I got to get it out of here. But I will be building a stand and putting a different style aquarium in here. Leave any kind of comments down below with ideas for the next time that we build the inverted or upside down aquarium. Now it's time to check in on our boy Moby. Not a lot of introduction needed with him. So we're just going to go ahead and roll into a feeding clip. All right, folks, that's going to wrap this one up. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can follow along with all these adventures. Hope you all enjoyed this one, and we will see you all next time.